Hello and welcome to the fourth concert in the Barn Presents series, the series that is celebrating UK composers during this lockdown. The Barn Theatre is behind these series of uh, concerts. We are a 200 seat theatre in the Cotswolds and during this time we have estimated to lose a quarter of a million pounds. We are raising the profile of the composers, we have got amazing um, singers and performers to attend this evening and also we are trying to bring in donations if you'd like to donate tonight there will be a number on the screen or you can go and visit our website which is www.barntheatre.org.uk forward slash sob for save our bar tonight we celebrate the work of stephanie jane amys and teddy clements so i have them here with me tonight and uh, you'll know them from the work of Tomorrow Maybe, the hit, and also their upcoming production of Obella. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, get talking and uh, welcome the guys. So, Teddy, Stephanie, welcome. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Jamie. Thank uh, my, pleasure. No, my pleasure. So, people obviously won't know this, but when, uh, when did we first meet? It must have been, what, 2016? 17? 17, I think, because you came to our cabaret at the Barge, which was 2017 in August, I think. I did, and it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, why don't you, uh, um, well, what have you been up to since then? What have we been up to since then? Oh, quite a few things. So, we've got a couple of shows on the go at the moment. We've got um, uh, Tomorrow Maybe, which we started back in 2014, um, we'll talk a bit about that later, um, we've been working on different drafts of that, I mean, for anyone that knows anything about writing musicals, they take a very long time to get right, um, and as they say, saying, you rewrite musicals, not write them, so that is very much what we've been doing over the last couple of years, um, we've got a show called Abella, which we'll talk about later, which is a big actor musician piece, um, the last two years in particular, we've been focusing on, um, we were commissioned by the Mayflower Theatre in Southampton, which is where we're based, um, to write a piece to commemorate the 400 year anniversary of the Mayflower ship going over to USA. Um, so we've been working on that, and that was for a cast of 102, 106. Oh, um, youth theatre, so we had great fun with writing harmonies for that. So that's been a predominant focus of our last two years. Um, generally that's just writing and doing lots of bits and pieces, really. That's crazy. Like, okay. so I take it that show won't be going on a world tour anytime soon. Not, not anytime soon. Sadly, it won't be going on anytime soon at all due to local circumstances. It was due due on in August. They should be rehearsing right now. Uh, so just one of many cancelled productions. So that's been delayed now till next year. We currently think, um, but it will show its light of day. All one hundred and six. Not quite 106 harmonies. I was about to say 106 harmonies. That's not quite correct. That's every note on the piano. Well, um, well if, if people, obviously, uh, people watching, they don't know. Uh, Teddy and Stephanie are renowned for their harmonies. They, <laughs> you guys, I swear you guys can't write a bit of music without throwing in the most complex harmonies into every song. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always been something that's kind of been, I suppose, a little bit of a kind of signature of ours, like, the first, like all of our shows, particularly tomorrow, maybe where we kind of first started, was basically harmony from top to bottom. Obviously, we have some solos, and we're getting quite a few solos tonight. Um, but one of one of the things we've been doing in lockdown as well is we've been actually doing some virtual choir pieces. So we had a song that was um, at the end of the On Hope song cycle a few weeks ago that had ninety eight videos in it that we put together. Six, I think. Ninety six. There we go. Ninety six so. singers, and then a couple of others. We had a couple of, um, we had a friend that's a nurse that did some NHS videos. We had a friend that did a dance. So I have no idea what the final video count was, but there were 96 singers. I remember that. <laughs> so yeah, as many, as many people as we can cram on stage as we like, which, you know. It's, well, it's apparently 96. Um, it's not, it's not as impressive as 98, like you originally oh, said, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take 96. It's fine. And uh, <laughs> I, I know it's been a uh, uh, tricky 
to uh, choose the the songs for tonight's concert because of the fact that obviously we are in this weird and very crazy time right now and uh, uh, people are having to do duets and trios from uh, afar so having to do those harmonies is, is really hard for people who don't know to try and work with a performer and bounce off each other yeah. from cities apart or countries apart is, is quite difficult how, how have you two found working with the performers and creating that so we've spent an awful long time over this kind of lockdown period trying to work that out for lack of better reason i've learned how to use final cut pro which and like video editing software and steph has gone more in depth into music editing software than we have ever been before just to find ways of getting videos to match up it doesn't matter how accurate a performer is or a guide vocal is everyone's interpretations just mean that everyone's just slightly out so we spent a long time getting everything lined up to sound as good as it does um, in, in those kind of quiet pieces. Well, as I said, you can, uh, you can hear it in the uh, recordings that we've got so far and the videos we've had is because the quality is incredible. And what, what, without giving obviously too much weight, obviously people now know the lineup for the, uh, for the concert. But um, I, say, I say, I ask every composer this and every composer has the same question, which is we cannot choose. But have you got uh, one that you're um, uh, really excited about or a performer in the list who you've always been wanting to work with or anything like that? I'm going to defer. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a really hard question. Um, I tend to prefer songs that are newer, um, generally as I'm trying to learn the character, getting used to the show, and they tend to be my favourites. We've got a brand new song from a brand new show that's less than two weeks old tonight, which I'm quite excited about. But equally, we've also got some older songs which are being done in completely different ways. So maybe a female song that's become male or vice versa, or um, a song that used to be for a tenor that's now for a bass, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, lots of different, lots of different pros. So yeah. So, so you're, you've literally taken the politician approach and been like, yeah, the question's over here, I'm gonna go over there. <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. I also think that it would be unfair to say because we're still awaiting two songs, so I feel mean to those two people if I haven't listened to them. So that is very true. That is very diplomatic of you. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> um, so first up, we are, have got the phenomenal Jodie Steele and uh, Rebecca Bailey. I know you've worked with Rebecca quite a lot uh, in yeah. the past, uh, and is this your first time, uh, Jodie, singing some of your work? Yeah, so Jodie, this is the first time I think Jodie's ever encountered our work and the first time, well, obviously we've, I've, we've seen Jodie on stage, um, but we've never actually had her sing anything before. Um, uh, yeah, she's just, she's just amazing. She's, she's done all sorts of amazing things with this song and put her own stamp on it. And there's just so much kind of character that comes across of her as well as the character she's playing, so... Amazing. I, I can't, I honestly can't wait to hear both these songs because I'm a huge fan of Jodie's, but I'm also a huge fan of Rebecca's. She's got an incredible voice. Rebecca, for those who don't know, uh, Rebecca joined us at the barn to launch our second season. She actually sung a song from Daddy Longlegs in our, um, in our launch concert back in 2000 and I want to say 18. I'm probably lying. It may be 2019. I can't remember. Um, but uh, she's, she is pretty incredible. Um, so obviously they've got Two songs you've got perfect man and time's gone by um uh, why don't you tell us a bit about these two songs so perfect man uh is a song that has no home it's just a little its own standalone song and time's gone by i'm gonna have to pass over to steph because he's got the brains on this one <laughs> so time's gone by is the new song from the brand new project that we started writing not even in lockdown like in the last two weeks of lockdown um it's one that we've been wanting to write for a while um but literally only just had time to put pen to paper really and um it is look is a musical that looks at my experience of running community choirs because that's what i do usually, obviously not at the moment, sadly. Um, but I've been very inspired by the people I've worked with and the people I've met through that. So, um, and the basis for the show would be how music can bring people together and heal. Um, and the song we're going to hear from that tonight is the, there's only two that we've written so far. And this one is the lead character, the first time we meet the lead character. Um, she's a lady who has 
sadly lost just lost her husband of many years and isn't really sure what she wants um, part of her wants to just live a simple life um, thinking that all the joy is behind her but there's also a part of her that starts to fight to truly live and that's what this song's about and it's called times gone by amazing great well uh if you would do the honors why don't you um do you want to introduce a song each uh and let's let's hear let's hear the uh let's hear the song so uh stephanie teddy uh, Teddy, would you want to first take it away and then Stephanie let us know what we're hearing? So first up we have Perfect Man sung by the amazing Jodie Steele. And second up we have Times Gone By by Rebecca B. Some girls wait a lifetime just to find the perfect man But I date one each week and have the best dates I'll ever have. So why are you ask? Am I still not settled with a guy? Well, ladies, this is my reply. David, Mr. Rich, clean shaven and pristine. He held the door. Put out the chair and let me ride his limousine And he wasn't one of those rich boys Who frankly I can't stand He was kind, he was sweet And by the book of perfect man And ladies, I've been lucky, I know But that sweet rich man just had to go Cause I like a man who's tough I like a man who's a little bit rough I like a man who can rip the clothes off of me Cautious and irritating A little too perfect a touch too far Far too eager to win my heart And though I've tried as hard as I can I like a It's nothing without you, 
But I'll keep pushing through and find my way somehow. Something simple, I'll be fine in my old ways, quiet, gentle. A way to spend my days, is it too much to ask for a life without fuss? Passing the time, just remembering us. Unlike times gone by Perhaps I'll take a look At a long forgotten book From times gone by Or finish that green scarf How my knitting made you laugh In times gone by Maybe given time, these things of yours and mine will just be mine instead. And maybe this pain won't last. Maybe loneliness will disappear and I'll stop living in the past and try to see. So that was Jodie Steele with Perfect Man and Rebecca Bailey with Time's Gone By. Next, we have Marcus Aiton join us. Hey, Marcus, how are you? Hey. How are things? I'm good, thank you. It's hot as hell here, but I'm good. <laughs> well, yeah, we're saying it's, uh, it's 28 degrees today. It's the same as uh, most places in Greece, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's absolutely it's boiling. We've got it here in the, in the UK, so it's good we're in lockdown. We don't need to the weather. So, so how have you, how have you found lockdown? How how have you found working in this new way? Obviously, with um, having to record and not being on stage. Yeah, it's a it's a bizarre way because obviously the way you record stuff is not how you think you're going to record it. So that's been a challenge, like not being able to hear your voice, but you can hear your voice, and then it's, yeah, it's a lot of things. So usually, but you get used to it as anything. Yeah, exactly. Like, people have got used to this lockdown. Yeah. I think it's that exactly. You, you kind of adapt and evolve to a new way of learning, a new way of working because of the fact that we kind of don't really have any choices at the moment, yeah. even, even with the new um, uh, announcements saying yeah. that obviously 4th of July, but theatres can open, but we cannot do live performance. Um, no one can sing. They have to mime. I don't understand. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, we could do, we could do a, a, a drag show. Mm. That could we could that could work, couldn't it? Yeah, could, that could work. But could, isn't miming still letting out something? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're exactly. still going to be letting something out. So I don't understand that. No, well, like I said, hopefully it's uh, sooner rather than later. But um, so the song you're going to be singing for us is uh, "One Step at a Time." Um, yeah. How how have you found this song? And after that. Steph and Teddy, how did this kind of come about? So, Marcus, how did you how did you find this song? Oh, at first, listen to it. I was like, oh, it's, it's a girl's song. I could never sing that song. And then you sing it, and it is a very challenging song. As you will see in the video, I have a nice little glow on me. But I said, no, I'm keeping it in because it shows, shit, this, 
Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> fine. You did, you did, it, it makes you work. So you've made me work, you two. <laughs> Our pleasure. <laughs> it sounds amazing, though. I'm so happy with it. Thank you. Actually, it really works in the guy's voice as well. It's a song that we always wrote for a girl. It's only ever been performed by a girl until tonight. There we go. So, number first one. A couple of bits of key changes, but, you know. Yeah. But it does work. You can hear it yeah. from, from the first one you made me listen to to the ones you've sent through. And I was like, ah, oh, it really works. Amazing. And so, and so, Steph, what, what, tell us a bit about this song. Where's it from? Like, what's the context behind it? So this song is from our show Tomorrow Maybe, which is an immersive song cycle set in a coffee shop. And the whole idea is that the whole musical is about the people that you see every day but don't know anything about. So the whole concept is all the cast multi-role. You see many, many different people coming in and out of the shop throughout. Um, this character, um, for one step at a time, happens to be one of the staff members, one of the brief at the coffee shop um, and they're very scatty and clumsy and break things all the time and um, the song is the moment where they find out they've got their dream job so yeah amazing, amazing. so and now, now we've heard Marcus sing it is uh, is there a rewrite on the cards in, in the future maybe potentially a, a male casting on it well, actually, what we're working on at the moment is a draft of the show that is flexible in multiple ways. Um, it's got a set structure and a couple of songs that always remain, but there are flexible parts of the show, so whoever does the show can opt which songs they want to do, opt which songs they don't want to do, and they can literally pick characters and pick songs and pop them in and out. That comes with the flexibility of being able to change range as well, so it could be a male or a female song, um, some group songs, some not group songs. And also flexible cast size, which I think we worked out was a minimum of five and could go up to like five. Um, yeah. Anything as uh, if a university group wants to do it, they can make it a 35 if they really wanted to. Okay. But realistically, about well, professionally, probably only about nine. <laughs> so actually, it's great that we've actually just trialed this now, having it in a different voice to whatever we'd ever expected, because it just has shown us what could happen with their other songs that we think are set but might actually change. So it's yeah. very exciting for us. It's, yeah. And, and Marcus is the guinea pig. So. <laughs> Accidentally, but it's actually worked really well. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, I because I heard, I think the first time I worked with Marcus would have been like 2012. Yeah, yeah, been. way back then. And uh, Marcus, you two wouldn't have known this, but Marcus did a was part of this group that did the rendition, rendition of Feed the Birds. Mm. And oh... <laughs> <laughs> my god it's it's still i think it's still on youtube i think you still find well, it there's like a bit of it on youtube but yeah it was a good like rendition of it everyone sang like it was sang. you're like okay. phen phenomenal yeah. absolutely phenomenal all of you and then there's one part where, where you kick in and it just you kill it but um <laughs> 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 but um, no, Marcus. Obviously, very, very thank you for doing the song and being part of this. And um, obviously, you will be uh, after you. There'll be one more song. So um, that'd be Phoebe uh, with "Shade of the Mountain." Um, uh, Steph, uh, Teddy, why don't you tell us a bit about that quickly? So uh, "Shade of the Mountain" is throughout the kind of day in the coffee shop. There's only one person who stays stable the entire time, and tomorrow maybe, and that is our kind of owner uh rosa uh, so shade of the mountain uh, who sorry i should probably say rosa is a kind of a sicilian sicilian lady who has emigrated to england to run her parents coffee shop uh so shade of the mountain is her kind of final 11 o'clock of the show effectively where she finally just wants to get out i think it's the simplest explanation step yeah it's kind of a moment where throughout the whole show, because you're so focused on these characters that come in and out, because she's there constantly, you've kind of not really paid her any attention. So actually, finally, towards the end of the show, you realise that actually there's a lot going on with her as well that you just won't have seen. Um, and yeah, the song's kind of about loss, nostalgia, um, and also loneliness to quite an extent. Um, but also oh. looking back on her life in Sicily. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, I, I guess uh, people will need to hear these songs. So, um, Marcus? <laughs> Do you want to introduce the next two songs? Okay, so this next song is by myself, Marcus Aiton, and it's called One Step at a Time. The next song you will hear after is by Phoebe Fields, and that's called Shade of the Mountain. Enjoy, guys. We 
is the underachiever, always second best. I climb a mountain, walk 10 miles, but I'm still behind the rest. My sister was simply perfect, my brother could do no wrong. But I've been a disappointment my whole life long. But look at me now, mother, shouldn't you be proud? Look where I am, daddy. Up at a time, what it takes in one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna save the day. Say it, yes, Louis, we hear you, and yes, we understand. We love your every vision, and we want to sponsor you, and we can wait. My heart is beating double fast and feeling ten feet high. And if I don't come down, I know I reach the sky. I can see the sun is shining down on me. I can see the road ahead. It's my time to take the lead. I will soar. I will shine. I'll defy expectations across every line. I'll do what it takes till the whole world is mine. Take one step at a time Or leap and take nine Pull yourself in and abandon all ties Take caution to the wind Your need limits the sky Climb every mountain
just myself So many things I was lost in the shade of the mountain And the things she signified I lived one day at a time The storyboard was mine And I never looked forward I never looked back I never once tried to keep the wheels on track Connecting stories but not fixing mine I was living and dreaming completely separate lives But what's left at the end of the day When the stories have all gone I'm stuck here with the echoes of a world So that was Marcus Aiton and Phoebe Fields. Next up, we have the glorious Fronte Tadman. Welcome, Fronte. Oh, glorious. I like that. I know, That's right? great. Thanks. That's very generous. Well, I, th I, think it's, I think it's once you've worked for the barn more than twice, you get glorious. I, you, yeah. you, you get to that point. But, it's um, a tiered level system. Yeah, oh, I like exactly. it. If you work there once, it's fantastic. You're fantastic. If you work there mm. twice, it's glorious. If you work there okay. three times, it's never happened yet. So I'll, I'll who knows? Yeah, well, who I'll knows? get there. I'm I'm in the running to maybe be one of the first. Maybe if you I can play my cards right. <laughs> but there's actually uh, a bit of a pop quiz. I think there's only three, no four. So it's yourself, Ryan Bennett, Jonathan Charles, and uh, Rosalind Ford. Are the ones who have uh, done two shows. Ah, wow. We should do a thing. I don't know what, but let's do something about that. Just yes. be the barn nerds. That's great, <laughs> yes. You could do a quartet. The, yes. barn, the barn buddies. Perfect. Oh. That's yeah, done. It's done. It's T done. Teddy, Teddy and Steph can compose it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, sorted. <laughs> I, I, I love how we've gone on, like, we haven't even, like, said you're going to be singing or anything like that. We're just talking about the... <laughs> The barn body yeah. and my dog barking a, in the background. We're just having a bit of a meeting. I think that's important. Exactly. For the people to see. Yeah. <laughs> this is copyrighted. Barn buddies, copyrighted, just Done. so everyone knows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and my dog is also very oh, excited. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so can also Robbie, star. Yeah. yeah that, oh yes. Mascot. <laughs> um, how have you um how, how have you found this? How have you found doing this? Obviously doing a, a song and a duet uh, mm. from home. How how have you found it? Um, it's been really nice. I think it's, I've, I've really liked the fact that I got a duet because I think what I've real lockdown has really made me realise, um, I think most people as well, that for me, the process and the getting to know the people you're working with is my favourite bit of the job. Um, because I mean, obviously the performances are great and getting clapped at the end and it's all lovely, but some, some days it's not great or sometimes you don't feel like performing and you've got to anyway, whereas getting to know a fun group of people is always a pleasure. And, um, and what was great about having duet is that I had a bit of back and forth sort of e-meeting, um, Steph and Teddy, and then also had a really nice little WhatsApp FaceTime with Esme, who I did my duet with. Um, and that was lovely. And she's a new grad and having to graduate during this time must be crazy. So it was nice to sort of just have a real chat with someone new in the industry, really, and just sort of 
keep that alive because obviously that's that's been something that's been a bit tricky uh during the uh, little plant pandemic we're going on going yeah. on at the moment so well yeah. yeah it's it's like i said it's hard to kind of connect and um and stay creative i think is is the kind yeah. of hardest part of all this because of mm. obviously being at home on your own a lot of people and it's just uh, loneliness depression all these things kick in and it's, it's it is very hard yeah there's there's nothing to distract you really uh, if things get tough which in some ways is really rewarding but in other ways it's like oh give me a break just let me have a new friend <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so oh, this has oh, given oh. me a new friend hopefully <laughs> oh, amazing good it's great well, yeah. exactly what we're after and obviously like I said Esme is a new grad and that's the that's the the key or part of this obviously we are we are here to showcase fantastic performers obviously uh, put the uh, barn on the stage and also uh, talk about some phenomenal composers but also mm. help new graduates because during this time obviously the 2020 graduates imagine three yeah. years and then just jumping off that cliff to to this oh. And just no, no, I mean, it's an uncertain time anyway, but when the actual industry that you are planning on going into is just transforming before your very eyes, that must be, yeah, really, really scary. So, but yeah, Esme's great. She's doing good. She's got a good head on her shoulders, so I'm sure she'll be fine. Great. <laughs> well, thank you, obviously, for uh, taking her under your wing. Uh, <laughs> so these these two songs, obviously, you've got your, your duet, um, and then we, we also have Evie Rose Lane after yourself. Um, yes. Uh, Steph, Teddy, why don't you tell us a bit about these two songs, Uncharted Waters and Closest Thing to Home? Um, yeah, so th these two songs are from our show, A Bella, which um, our other show we've been talking about is a song cycle, but this one is our big, big show. Um, it's got a cast of 12 plus act musicians, um, big story. A big story based musical um, and it basically looks at the struggle of female identity across two different timelines one of those is 1920s and one of those is modern day so the modern timeline follows Sarah who wants to be a writer and she's very um, pretty much a workaholic is how I would describe her um, in the city um, very very fast-paced lifestyle um, but her life is thrown into turmoil when her and her slightly haphazard sister um, inherit an old country house that they knew nothing about. And when Sarah gets to that house, um, she has the sudden flashback of childhood memories that she doesn't understand. And, um, and she also finds a diary which belongs to someone called Isabella Wilson, who is the 1920s character who was the daughter of a reverend um, and was an aspiring concert pianist. And obviously in those times in 1920s, um, becoming a famous concert pianist as a woman was particularly hard. Um, and she also has... Um, she's engaged to someone she doesn't love or want to marry um and her life is completely changed when she befriends a um, a traveling family who stop to work nearby um they're very open-minded and their music is very folky and incredible and um they change the way she thinks and really give her the confidence to be her own person um so this first song coming up on chartered waters is um the big big moment at the end of act one where isabella who is the lead character is inspired by Mama Ray, who runs the traveling family, um, and basically decides that she's going to follow her dream. She wants to become a concert pianist and she's not going to marry that man. Um, so it's the big female empowerment moment. And simultaneously, Sarah, who has been following the story through the diary, decides that she wants to write Isabella's story, and that's kind of towards the end of Act One. So that's the big Amazing. female power ballad. Um, and the second song, Closest Thing to Home, um, is these aren't in show order, I've just realised, which is slightly confusing. They're not. <laughs> uh, second song, closest thing to home, is When We Meet Mama Ray, who runs the travelling family. Um, and it's her kind of experience of being a traveller and the prejudice that's related... Um, prejudice that's... I don't mean related to that. Do I mean that? Is that the right word? Prejudice that comes with that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and... Say this again, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> and the prejudice that is uh, comes with that um and she basically says the world is a cruel place for those it's misunderstood which leads into the song amazing well we've obviously t done this well because obviously uh, bronte is a fantastic actor musician and this is an actor musician show so <laughs> you know it's a budding actor musician no, oh, no, you smash actor, it in Christmas Carol. The, yeah with help this is why i need the other people that i was talking about i need them oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need them to, you know, you know. Teach push. me how to play the guitar. <laughs> hey, no one out, no, none in the audience would have known you did, had no idea what you were doing. Jen, you yeah. looked great on that guitar. You were fine. Cheers. That really, really means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, 
I, I, I guess we uh, better allow um, everyone to hear these songs. So, uh, Bronte, do you want to introduce the next two songs? Okay, um, so first up is Esme Cook and myself singing Uncharted Waters. This life he speaks of is a fantasy. It's not that simple for a woman like me who's held back by so many ties. But one who dreams and she closes her eyes. Only a fool allows themselves to dream Naive little girls can't be more than they see They have duties, expectations to fulfill Nothing more Until someone plants a seed in her mind and now she needs to somehow find Uncharted waters, an unknown sky A life of silence to defy She opened up a door that was never there before And now I can't deny the want for something more Uncharted waters Could there be Be something more A life that's free So I could leave here And do exactly as I meant to Always wasting, always waiting for my dreams to come true. But nothing will happen if I don't see it through. So now it's time for a new point of view. I will not conform that way. No, I will choose to have a say. Uncharted waters, a brave new sky Expectations I will defy I'll be something more than ordinary Something more than dinners and dances of country life Something more than waiting around to be some man's wife Something more than watching every word But now I'll play and I'll play and I'll play Until my voice is heard I will make you heard Uncharted waters start to work I will write your story The fire started Now watch it burn So that was Bronte Tadman and Esme Cook. Next up, we have Josh Andrews. Welcome, Josh. Thank you for joining us. Hi, guys. No, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Oh, my pleasure. How have, um, well, how are things and how have you found this weird and, I guess, not wonderful time? Well, um, I've grown a beard, as you can probably see. The glorious yeah. shave. And I've had a complete change of uh, tactic. Um, 
obviously I'm still in musical theatre and I still will be doing musical theatre, but I've joined the nine to five crew at uh, working for the government. Sounds a bit secret. Yeah, I'm, I'm not allowed to say what branch I'm doing officially. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, I, yeah, I'm joining the nine to five group, and uh, I'm really actually enjoying it. So much free time. Yeah, yeah you're allowed to drink Saturdays, Sundays off. It's a dream. <laughs> so, so do you think moving forward, you'll you'll obviously go back to performing, and then do a bit of a bit of this in the daytime, or, or between contracts? No, I mean, if if there was enough hours in the day, maybe. But no, there's performing is is hard enough as it is without having to get up at seven seven o'clock in the morning. So you know ride for an hour to get to work every day I've, I've just got this vision now of you working for somewhere like the fbi or mi5 and that's why you've grown this very well, fantastic could be, beard could be it's just a deception yeah it makes sense and uh so uh this is your first introduction to uh teddy and steph's work i believe yes it is yes yeah and how, how have you found it because obviously you're doing a duet with uh with adam bailey well you know what i it's really hard to find a good male musical theater duet it's really, really hard, and they're lacking. So it's really good to get one and be able to like sink your teeth into it. Thanks. No, no, it was not, honestly. It was because most things are always, you know, male or female or a female duet. So it's glorious to have something which is which you're able to bounce off someone with. And of course, it's always exciting to discover for me new work. And I've and I'm going to be honest, I hadn't heard of you guys before apologies but my musical Fair theater enough. knowledge isn't the greatest to begin with however i will be listening to your stuff in the future so because i great. really really enjoyed this song it really really grew on me and i'm i'm really fond of it now and even after you know after i've learned it it's still popping in my head i'm still going through it so yeah it's, it's really good so yes yeah, so for anyone uh listening obviously we are talking about another song from tomorrow maybe um what uh, this song, uh, Steph? Uh, tell us a bit more about it. I mean, Josh said it all. Really, it's quite simple. It's um, um, we try and put as many harmony songs and many group songs in um, the piece as possible. And um, this is the male duet or one of the male duets that's available. And it's essentially two people who met uh, the night before or a couple of nights before, open to interpretation, and decide to go on a coffee date to see if it's going to go any further. And um, yeah, it's it's quite awkward and hopefully endearing. That was my aim anyway. <laughs> so Josh, does it has it come across in that way? Has it felt awkward? But at the same time, I do know that you have uh, done a duet with somebody who is potentially not even in the same city as you. So that must be strange. Yeah, it is strange, um, especially because I, I've, I think I've recorded mine first, am I right in saying, and that Adam is going to sing along with me. So I've almost got a solo and then he's going to duet over the top of it in some ways. Um, but yeah, it is. It, it's exactly what, what Stephanie said. It's, you know, it's one character is very awkward in the beginning. And I feel the, the other character is slightly more confident. And my character is really awkward, really unsure all the way through of what he, like what's going to happen. Whereas the other one's a little bit more confident, a little bit more raunchy. So it's really good to be that one, you know, the, the nervous one. It's nice playing that. I love that word, raunchy. Just great word. <laughs> just it's just a great word. Uh, and obviously, uh, after you, we'll be hearing Cameron, um, and he'll be singing "Pull Through." Uh, Teddy, why don't you tell us a little bit about "Pull Through"? So, "Pull Through" is one of those songs that is probably of the songs on this list for this concert is probably our oldest song. It has been in a few shows at this point. Actually, we actually I had nothing to do with it in the first instance. So this was written way back for a show that Steph and I took to Edinburgh as students in Southampton. And it was sung by a guy who was actually let coming on later in the concert. Um, yeah, it was written for Cabaret as a fundraiser for that. Then it went to it, then went in a show in Edinburgh. Then it ended up in the first draft of Tomorrow Maybe. Then it was removed from a draft of Tomorrow Maybe. Um, and is now one of the optional songs if you want to pop it in the show or if you if you don't so but, it's been through a few drafts so I th in my eyes it's, it's kind of like a super sub it kind of just it's there if you you know if you if you need yeah. it but at the same time you, you, you don't have to have it there but, yeah um, what's kind of especially nice about this one is actually every single time it's ever been done it's always been it's always been by a guy but it's always been by a big old belty tenor 
And actually, what's been wonderful about having Cameron on board is he immediately went, oh, no, I'm a big a big open base. So actually, we have, we have dropped it right down to let all of his beautiful, silky resonance out. And it has taken on new life as a song. Amazing. I feel like that's great. We've had that a lot through, obviously, through all your songs. Obviously, we've kind of been like, oh, it's a tenor. Yes, give it a bass. That's done by a man. Let's do it for a woman. Let's let's just switch it around, which has yeah. been really nice. Um, great. Well, I, I guess we uh, shouldn't leave people waiting too much longer. Uh, Josh, uh, would you do us the honour of introducing the next two songs, please? Of course I will. So uh, next we have myself and Adam Bailey singing What Will Be Will Be. And after that, we have Cameron Bernard Jones singing Pull Through. Every moment, overthink each move I make. So the other night felt perfect, or maybe I was wrong. Will he still like what he sees when the lights are switched back on? So I crack a joke or two, and couldn't sound more dumb. And the awkward silence stretches out from here to kingdom come. But then he laughs And something here has shifted So small I nearly missed it A tiny spark Crackling through the air But I'm so hyper aware That no reason can define why This just feels right He just feels So okay, it was just one night, but sometimes you just know, you know, what if he feels the same, he doesn't let it show, don't let it show. Buses all arrive at once That you will stumble on love When it's the last thing you're looking for They say what will be what will, will be, be But that's not good enough for me When I know I want more So take a just to reach Which I can't I keep it out of sight 
So I'll never be proved right That love's not always worth the pain It's not worth the compromise Trying to work it through Well at least I try It's easier Without you Instead of waiting for you To pull through Now I'm the one With nothing to say And you're the one Throwing it away And I don't know If I could be there when you need me And I don't know If I could choose between What I want and what you need I don't know if I could be the one to pull through Not even for you I've never been the kind of guy To fall head over heels But then there was you But then there was you You filled the space within me You unlocked a fragile heart I succumbed and let you in Now you've torn it all apart I've never felt like this before I gave you everything but you Still needed more And now I don't know If I could be there when you need me And I don't know If I could choose between what I want And what you need I don't know if I could be the one to pull through Not even for you How can you have no idea just what you put me through? How can you have no idea how much I trusted you? How can you stand there and expect me to understand? How can you stand there and ask me to take your hand? How can you stand there and look me in the eye? When after all, you're the one who said goodbye. You weren't there each time I needed you. And you weren't there to catch my fall You had to choose who came first, me or you And guess who won that battle And guess who took the fall How can you stand there and expect me to just give it all How can you stand there and expect me to forget it all how can you stand there and expect me to forgive it all? How can you stand there and expect me to forgive it? So that was the brilliant Josh Andrews and Adam Bailey and also the magnificent Cameron Bernard-Jones. Next up, we are blessed with the presence of Heba El Sheik. And um, she will be... <laughs> yeah, it's pressure. Hebe, Hebe, I'm putting you on a bar now. Oh Jane, you're, you're, you're top, you're our last guest of the evening. You're going to be talking about our last two songs. So yeah, I'm throwing you up there. Okay. Um, but uh, how, how have you been? How, how are things? I mean, as good as can be in this crazy time, but feeling good, feeling positive. So yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, it, there's every time I try and talk to someone about it, it literally just turns into breath. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's no way of describing it. Um, okay, and obviously you were in Jamie when yeah. this all happened. Yeah. So uh, is is there, I presume you'll be going back into that after this? Well, we still don't really know. I think everything's been up in the air with like uh, the theatre industry and everything. So fingers crossed, like as, as far as we're all concerned, we want to go back, but it's just whether or not we can, it's still up in the air. Yeah, 
well, I said we're we're all hoping for the same thing, and hopefully we will see some. Obviously, we've, we've heard that they're going to be relaxed on the fourth of July, but you know, no no sound allowed. But um, we will uh, hopefully in the future we'll uh, hear a bit more change, and hopefully we'll all be doing this on stage. That's that's the dream, I guess. Which yeah. sounds strange because that's usually the standard to do this it, on stage. Yeah, it feels more weird than being on stage. I think about. <laughs> I know. I'm more used to this now than being on stage. I was going to say, like, when we get back to, back to normal, everyone's going to be really weirded out by actually seeing people and like social distant. Like, it's just going to be a very weird I'm world. Scared I've got no social skills anymore. Like, when I see someone, I'll just be really awkward and just be like, "Hi," because I haven't seen people in the longest time. So, apart from my family, yeah, you you won't know how to run a conversation, will you? Yeah. They'll be like, "How's your day?" And you'd be like, "Oh." <laughs> literally you try, won't have a clue um <laughs> but uh th obviously thank you for joining us tonight uh, and being obviously our, our final guest of evening um and uh how have you how have you found this obviously working with uh, i know you've been working with steph and teddy obviously trying to uh record the song and obviously get everything right how, how's it been it was lots of fun i don't know how uh, steph and teddy feel but i i really enjoyed it and um it was nice to be able to learn something new and sing something new in this time as well um, and get my brain working a bit because I feel like I've not had to learn anything in a while. <laughs> so it was nice. Um, and it was fun. It was really nice to kind of like sink my teeth into new material because I love um, I love being a part of like a, a workshop process or getting to sing new things that haven't been sung before. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of uh, a lot of new musicals. So something like this is always really exciting for me because um, I like to get to sing things that haven't been sung before selfishly. Um, but, but yeah, so it, was, it was lots of fun to be able to kind of listen to this and listen to a version that you guys had before and this kind of different bits in this new version. So it was fun, it was lots of fun. Amazing. And uh, Ted, Ted, so Teddy, why don't you tell us a bit about this song that we're, we're obviously discussing? So, uh, so this song is sung by Sarah, who is our kind of modern day protagonist. And this is effectively her, uh, wait, it's the I Want song of the show. It's the big, big power number right at the top of the show that hopefully everyone will remember. Um, <laughs> so as Steph mentioned earlier, Sarah kind of goes into the house for the very first time. Uh, she has all these kind of weird memories of has she been here before and what's happening and this kind of melody that's floating through her head as she kind of walks over to the piano and touches the piano for the first time. Um, and this where we get this from, and it's the first time that we've seen any sort of dent in this very steely, steely-faced woman, basically. It's a steely-faced power woman who suddenly actually has a little moment of, whoa, something, something's not quite right. Um, and that is... That is Amazing. the melody. So, sounds great. And that sounds like Hebrew all over. Do you mean the steely face <laughs> power woman? Uh, that's, a, that's a great, that, I feel like that should be on the top of uh, people's CV. I am a steely faced power woman. Yeah, that's great. That's I'll great. add it. I'll add it to mine. <laughs> do it. Do it. Uh, and obviously this won't be the only song we hear of the last two songs. We have also got our first ever trio on uh, these series of concerts, which petrifies me because we're having to do this all over obviously zoom and uh, digitally but um steph why don't you tell us a bit about this trio um so this is also from um bella um so basically the last two songs were the top and tail of the show essentially um distant melody is song two and these old shoes which is the trio is the second to last songs it's the one before the finale basically um, and I don't want to say too much about it because it will ruin the whole uh, <laughs> storyline of the show. But it's um, basically uh, one of my favourite moments between three characters in the old timeline. Um, Isabella, who's the want-to-be concert pianist. Sylvan, who's one of the travellers and is the man that she falls in love with. And Sylvan's younger brother, Daniel. So it's just a beautiful moment between the three of them. I won't say any more than that storyline. But um, yeah, nice. a special moment for us. We wanted to end with it. Nice. We like short and sweet. It's absolutely fine because most people who are listening want to just hear the songs. So, uh, <laughs> they don't, don't want to see my face nattering away. Um, so obviously, Heba, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And obviously, thank you for recording the song. And thanks, Jane. It's been amazing. And uh, thank you, Teddy and Steph, for giving up your time to work for all these fantastic performers um, and letting us showcase your work and obviously i want to say a big thank you for all the performers everyone else who supported the barn during this time um we wouldn't be here uh, without you and our doors would probably close permanently if it wasn't for this kind of content going out and the donations coming in so really really from the bottom of our hearts thank you um 
So to finish off our fourth concert, Heba, will you do us the honors of introducing yeah. the last two songs? I will, I'm gonna read this so I don't get it wrong. So, do it, do it. I'm Heba al Sheik and I'm singing Distant Melody. And then after me will be Sam Otto, Aidan Harkins and Lucy Island singing These Old Shoes.
these old shoes will carry me on until I find a place where I belong. These old shoes will carry me on. These old shoes. Have seen many a sky. And the skies are blue. These old shoes have no love, but they've learned to say goodbye. They brought me back. These old to shoes you. don't look so smart. Back but these you. shoes do have a heart. I'm tired and I'm down. When I'm tired and I'm down, shoes keep my feet, my feet on, on solid ground. And these old shoes. Carry me on, and these old shoes will outlive me when I'm gone. These old shoes will carry me on until I find a place where I belong. These old shoes will carry me on. No matter how far I stray, I know that they'll bring me back someday. And no matter how far I roam, they'll bring me back home. shoes will carry me on until I find a place where I belong. These old shoes will carry me on. They'll carry me
In March 2018, we opened our doors to the public with a vision not just to create challenging professional theatre, but to use this as a platform to inspire and bring communities together. Theatre and culture build identity. With theatre and culture in our local life, the community landscape is more vibrant. Local life is enriched. We believe that the benefits of theatre should be available for everyone. Our Theatre for All programme has removed financial barriers, giving disadvantaged people access to the theatre free of charge. So we were told that we'd come here and have a Christmas meal and then go and watch A Christmas Carol. Our aim is to make live professional theatre available to everyone and use that experience for positive change. Theatre can be transformational in young lives. Our academy is now in its fourth year and we continue to build on our vision of bringing the best performing arts tuition to the heart of the Cotswolds. We work hard to make our academy as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Discounts apply for parents with more than one child. Our bursaries help support talented children from less affluent backgrounds. The academy creates a fun and challenging environment where children can build friendships and develop key skills, not just for theater, but for life. We are also able to provide real opportunities for students who wish to pursue careers in the arts. My name is Harry Apps. I am currently playing Marius in Les Miserables in the West End. Barn outreach and learning programmes engage with thousands of people. Our free workshops support the drama curriculum in local schools. Singing and musical theatre workshops in community groups and care homes have helped address issues of isolation. Our Song for Sirencester project in aid of mental health charities brought our community together in an unprecedented way. We've collaborated with many charities in the region, including the Churn Project, to support individuals dealing with the barriers to finding work. Since working you UN, my life's changed. It's given me some purpose, given me an interest, some confidence I was lacking prior to all this. The Barn Theatre played a pivotal role in the town's 2018 World War I centenary celebrations. Who could forget our record-breaking human poppy? Our live streaming work on the annual Advent Festival helped thousands engage and take part in Sirencester's Christmas festivities. In these times of uncertainty, we strive to keep the community together. The theatre may be temporarily closed, but our commitment to you goes on. Even now, our amazing costume department are helping the NHS by making scrubs for frontline workers. We've used our technology to build a free live streaming service that provides much needed community news and entertainment for all the family. Broadcasting every day to keep us all connected. We are not just a theatre. We are the bar.